Coyote rocket flight last month was a success in the sense that the engine worked perfectly and the rocket design was aerodynamically balanced and structurally sound. The parachute ejection system, however, failed to actuate. Since the rocket was destroyed when it hit the ground, it's unclear which part of the ejection system actually failed. I made a list of all the reasons I can think of why the parachute ejection system might have failed. Had I been able to recover the ejection piston, I might have a better idea of why it failed, but since that information is unavailable, I'll have to test all the items on the list. First, there was a bat switch on the side of the rocket that when closed, started a time delay relay that would actuate the piston and eject the parachute. A string with a loop on the launch rail pulled this switch closed as the rocket traveled up the rail. It's possible that since the rocket left the pad so quickly, the switch might have closed and then snapped back into the off position. It's also possible that the string never closed the switch in the first place. Since I'm not going to use this string switch setup in the future, I'm not going to test it. Improper wiring is an unlikely cause, since I bench test each electronics package several times before it's installed in the rocket. This is the electronics package for the next flight. This light represents the engine ignition, and 17 seconds after it's actuated, the ejection charge fires represented by this other light. So no problem there. Aerodynamic forces acting on the electronics is an unlikely cause. The time delay relays I use are solid state and encased in epoxy. I've used them to air start second stage engines before, so I don't think they're the cause. There's really no way I can test this other than with a flight, and since I've seen them work under aerodynamic forces before, I'm going to cross this one off. Since the piston only uses one quarter teaspoon of sugar and potassium nitrate mixture, and that mixture sits in a space much larger than it, it's very possible that the powder mixture was not in contact with the nichrome wire when it was lit. To solve this problem, I've decided to use a very small one inch square Ziploc bag to hold the powder directly in contact with the nichrome wire. This bag will be placed inside the piston, so migration of the powder will be impossible. Here's a bag being tested. So no problem there. Long-term storage of the powder mixture directly in contact with the nichrome wire for weeks or months at a time might have caused the wire to corrode. This ignition cap from a rocket skateboard engine has been in storage for over a year. I'm going to test it to see if it still works. So no problem there either. I know the piston can overcome an 11 pound force, so it should be able to push out the nose cone at or near apogee without any problem. However, I've never static tested the ejection piston in a rocket body. Here's the piston assembly I'm going to fly. An interesting side note is the new material the bulkheads are made out of. I started using an epoxy perlite composite to make the bulkheads. There's a 30% weight reduction using this easy to make composite material over plastic, and it's cheaper too. Okay. The piston is installed in the rocket with the parachute and it's ready to test. It should eject in five, four, three. So that's everything. I don't see any reason why the parachute won't work in this upcoming flight. I guess the final test will be to fly it and see what happens. This is Kevin. Kevin from LA. Hey. What's up? <laughs> he brought a rocket. I should about the rocket. Uh, and the plane too. Yeah. Huh? Oh yeah, we got an airplane here. Uh...
Yeah. Where? He follows the leading smoke trail. And it doesn't appear to be... Uh, it's, it's, it's up there. It looks like something that's floating. Yeah, it's floating. Nice smoke trail. Yeah. Yeah, did you add you added that, huh? Uh-huh. I put one in mine too. <laughs> oh yes, it's coming on the shoot, I can see it. Oh yeah, it's it's slowly it's drifting, so the wind up there is moving the opposite way. That's awesome. But something's burning on it, no? Yeah. No, I think it's just a reflection from the sun maybe. No, the smoke. That's the smoke trail he put on there. I mean, it's falling pretty quick, but I mean, it's not that quick. You put a little shoot on it, huh? <laughs> oh, it looks like it didn't open all the way. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is the O ring that stops the parachute from snapping open and the o-ring didn't come down the metal ring held up really good fins held up really good rocket held up really good this is probably from when it landed and there's the piston piston pushed it out perfect Parachute or no? Yeah. It's supposed to. Well, it's definitely Holy. something opened up. It's definitely sitting yeah, up I there. See it. Holy crap, it worked. Somehow it got separated from the parachute. There's a fin can, an engine. The fins are intact almost. And then over here is what's left of yeah. everything else. But the parachute separated from it for some reason. But it did work. The system worked. The uh, parachute has a nose cone, it's still coming down, and the rest of the rocket came down. So overall? Overall was a success. Excellent. The smoke element in the rocket makes the engine casing really hot, and that makes the rocket body really hot, and it gets very pliable. So if, in later designs, if they're going to be reused, we have to go ahead and find a way to insulate the engine from the rocket body so that that heat isn't transferred through. And I think that will be a relatively simple thing to do. It's based on the uh, mercury switch principle of uh, when the engine cuts off. In this case, it's a dead weight on a piston. When the uh, engine cuts out, the, uh, the weight goes up. And it, there's a switch which normally should be open, but there's an electric circuit uh, gate that is closed and when the weight hits the switch it opens the electric the electronic gate and since the weight is going to be up all the flight up the 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 reed switch has a natural tendency to open up because it has a spring so and since everything's weightless at apogee when it's at weightless at apogee it will push the weight back and it open the circuit even though the weight is much heavier than it could normally push but it's weightless at apogee so in principle it should only work right at apogee and apparently it worked See? It's freaking genius. It's unbelievable. Was that a complete was that a clear explanation? I think so. We can do it. Clear to me, but I'm a genius too, so. We can we can show him a drawing, no? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. You are a genius. <laughs> Thank you. It's one genius to another. Give me five.